Right, 26 March 2024, and I want to start with a sound check. Sound check. Uh, can someone please tell me if you can hear me? Uh, I've got a new mic in a different place, and I don't know if this is working. Uh, can someone just confirm to me that you can hear me? Uh, anyone, please just say yes, we can hear you, so that I can continue. Uh, and while I'm waiting for that confirmation, I want to start with what is happening uh, in the Zimbabwe government. I've been speaking about this. Uh, thank you, Koma MS. I've been thinking about this and talking about this for a very, very long time. And many of you uh, thought that I was uh, talking my own thing. Uh, but it's becoming very clear that ED is now at a point where even people within his own government uh, can see that he's not fit for purpose and he is failing at a level that has never been seen before. All the projects that ED has started are not finishing and this is becoming a problem uh, even to people within the government of Zimbabwe. Yesterday, uh, General Chwenga had to go to one of the projects uh, which is at Mount Hampton. I went to Mount Hampton and at the bottom of the Parliament Hill, there is some construction which was taking place by the Chinese guys. So the Chinese guys were taking, uh, were constructing there. And since that period, which is almost two years, there has been no movement on that project. The Chinese have left. Uh, the Chinese guys who are working, they have left. And currently, uh, the roads are not complete. If you drive through uh, the area around Mount Hampton, it's a mess. Uh, the area up to Parliament, it's still dust. And this has become a problem. Uh, this is because ED employs the wrong contractors. If you drive around the, uh, the Harare Bedbridge Road, you will see the sections that are being handled by ED's friends are not complete. So you drive for a while, and the road will be fine. And then suddenly you go through this 20 kilometer stretch that is not finished. And if you see the company that is responsible there, those are ED uh, friends and relatives. They don't finish their projects. And uh, yesterday, General Chwenga had to go and force the guys who are at um, Mount Hampton, who are constructing there, to finish that little stretch of road. And I want to show you what General Chwenga said. It's crazy what is happening under ED. Now, airport is not complete, the dams are not complete, the roads are not complete, nothing is finishing, contractors are not paid, and, and this is becoming a very serious problem. So let's listen to what General Chwenga said So here. far so good, but we've not yet come to the point where we would say, now this is excellent, 24-7. There's no weekend, there's no night for you. You restructure yourselves. When we come here at 12 midnight, we want to see you working. We want you to come up with a time frame, but not July. I want everything done, finished by June. We would want to make our own people rich. We would want to give them the contracts, not to give outsiders. Okay, so I don't know if you guys heard that. My volume is very low. I have to, to talk to my provider here to say what is happening. But what General Chwenga is saying is, these guys have been working very slowly and they need to move fast. They need to meet the deadline, which was agreed. So as I said, this was supposed to be finished uh, almost two years ago. That's when they started. The Chinese had to leave there because they're not being paid. And they put companies there. Like I think currently they, they put in Exodus and company, which is quite a good company. But previously, the people that Mnangagwa had put there to construct that particular stretch of road have not done any work. If you drive all the way from um, uh, the, the mall there uh, at Westgate, all that stretch all the way to the parliament building is a mess. It's like you're driving in a rural road. There's been no construction that shows Uti. We are at parliament, uh, the very place where you're supposed to be having dignitaries coming in, the, the center of legislation in Zimbabwe. It's a mess, uh, and ED has not done a good job. I've always said this. When ED is done and gone, everyone is going to look back and say, this was like the most wasted period 
uh, in the period of, uh, of Zimbabwe, everyone is starting to see uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, he does a project and it does not have a long-term uh, impact on the economy. When they build a dam, they don't do anything after the building. They, they are more interested in the contract to build the, the dam. But what happens after? So they will say they will draw some a master plan. So I want to give you the example of Machikarana. I went there. They drew a master plan there for irrigation, for housing, for roads. And if you drive all the way from, from that Machikarana dam, there is no um, construction that has taken place. There's no irrigation project that has taken place. The, the farmers that are nearby who, who, who do tobacco, they still can't access the market. They live in the bushes. So you, you'll be driving in, in the bush and suddenly you see a, a tobacco farmer with his uh, fairness over there. So the, the, the failure to complete projects is becoming a very serious problem for ED. He tries to do so many things, but he does not understand what is causing the problem. What is causing the problem in Zimbabwe is the currency. So I want to say this over and over and over again. Firstly, you cannot have a currency which collapses by 100% every month. That will never work. And then you cannot have a failure to have uh, electronic payments. So in Zimbabwe, there is currently no electronic payments. Because when you do electronic payments, that is how you get charges. So when you charge people, foreigners who swipe at Victoria Falls, or who put their bank card into your country, they charge you get you charge a lot of fees when people withdraw money and when people swipe. But the guys around ED they don't want to to have a proper banking system because all their money is made from uh, uh, black market. So if the, the black market is dead, ED and his friends they will have no money. So that is where they are making their money, and that's why you see that they don't put in place a proper currency. And this thing is going to continue until they stop, until people like uh, General Chuenka come in and step in and stop the rot that is happening to the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. This is all happening at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Um, Tuling Mube, yesterday he was busy explaining why he wants to tax houses. Uh, you can go, he was sweating profusely. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with Tuling, he looks like he's sick. But he was busy talking about taxing houses. Do you know how much money Zimbabwe can make if you tax uh, foreigners who come in your country and swipe their cards? Right now, a foreigner is just coming into your country with cash and there is not a single cent that they're leaving. Previously, I used to leave every time I went to Zimbabwe. Every withdrawal that I made at Barclays or at CBZ was $4. So if I withdrew, they, they kept it at $100. So if I withdrew $100, they would take $4. So imagine if every foreigner who comes to Zimbabwe was to leave $4. At the moment, they're leaving nothing. They go to Victoria Falls. They're not even getting to Harare because the road is not working. The road is not functional. If you try to drive from Victoria Falls to Harare, you're going to lose a tire or you're going to lose your life. Same if you try to, if you drive from, uh, from Bed Bridge to Harare. There are stretches and stretches that, that are not finished. The dams that Minaga was supposed to put in place, they're not finished. So he's got all these multiple things that he's doing and they're not working uh very sad situation uh, right now in zimbabwe and I, I think i saw chamisa's tweet yesterday talking about these things the, the politics of zimbabwe is broken and ed is at the top of all this and i'm not uh, criticizing ed in a trivial manner you're going to see that as as we go it gets worse and worse because he's becoming more and more concerned about his image his popularity his wife uh, currently, today she's celebrating her 61st birthday. More than 10 minutes on last night's news was dedicated to different companies and people, including the military, uh, swearing allegiance uh, to Auxilia Mnangago. And that's crazy. Now, let's look at uh, Chamisa's tweets and then we'll, we'll, we'll go forward. There's another crazy tweet from Job Scala. So let's look at Chamisa's tweets. Chamisa has changed his uh, uh, profile picture. Uh, yellow. <laughs> his yellow back. Uh, President Jamisa, I don't know, but you can see that he's got the yellow uh, on his tie there. Uh, what, we, what what is happening uh, is is the yellow back. Uh, I'm very confused myself currently because these guys are not coming out to say are they going back to CCC or are they going to go to the blue? 
uh, the blue, I like the blue, but I think we've not launched here. Um, we thought that the launch was going to take place, but something has happened and the launch has not happened. So someone needs to come out and explain what is happening behold the new do we have the new or do we have the whole the old and uh unfortunately yesterday i didn't follow i was on the road so i didn't follow what happened with the nomination for you know that mount pleasant and harare east where makam and uh, mahere left they are going to be contested there so i didn't follow what's happening i'm going to follow on that but we need to we need clarity here is uh, is the yellow back uh, Chamisa needs to come out and say and explain where we're going. A, a lot of people are confused. And currently, people like Mkwanans are feeling the heat uh, because it's not clear whether Mkwanans is now the president or he's doing his own thing or he's placeholding for Chamisa. So it's not clear. Uh, Timba is totally out of it. You, you can, you, has anyone ever seen Timba speaking and saying what? So those are the kind of things that I'm talking about. We don't want uh, people that do not clarify the direction. So we want a, a proper direction of where we're going. Then there was obviously the tweet by Chamisa here. Uh, he, he's thanking the people of Senegal for the young president, the new young president, Bizori Jomai Fai. So this is a very significant de uh, development. We are going to have a new president in Zimbabwe uh, very, very soon. Uh, Idi is gone. It is finished. There, there's nothing that it is going to do. No one is looking at ED with any hope. Uh, who, who thinks that ED is going to do anything? The only thing that people are waiting for is for ED to finish his thing and go. And then people can start again planning. You can't plan anything right now. ED, Arukuraeva, and Zara. It's clear. Everyone is hungry under ED. No one is making money under Mnangagwa. The, the plans that Mnangagwa has don't work. Nothing is working in Zimbabwe at the moment. And then we've got the crazy tweet from Job Scala. If it was meant to be so, let it happen according to you, my lord. They ravaged, humiliated, tormented, and persecuted me. Then this, my lord, you are the healer of healers. I believe, my lord. So I think uh, Job Scala is probably suffering some uh, medical condition. That is my belief. And I do not know what it is about, uh, but he is obviously going through some things. As I said, he was at uh, a church, according to the people that talked to me in Renberg this week. And I showed you the video of your job scholar over there. But I'm not clear what is going on. I've tried my best to talk to people around job scholar, but he's not forthcoming. The guys around him are not forthcoming. So I do not know what he's, he's doing. So basically, the opposition in Zimbabwe does not have a clear direction. Nangaba is worse uh, because he's not delivering. And everyone now knows that, that ED cannot deliver. And I say it here every day. No, no one has confidence in ED at all. Especially me. I don't have confidence in ED. You, you guys can have <laughs> confidence in ED. But I don't. I, I don't want to have confidence in ED. His plans, the people around him, they are more interested in useless politics. Uh, when ED started, there was some attempt to to say, let's try to fix the thing. Let's try to do this and that. At the moment, there's no plan. You, you don't even know what it is doing. His parliament, his cabinet, his, his plans, they are just a mishmash of, of confusion. You, you don't know what is, it is uh, that it is doing. And it's confusing even people in Zanupiev. Uh, what exactly is it is plan? I do not understand what is... Uh, happening with ED. It, it, it's, it's actually an embarrassment right now. Uh, look at the situation with Charumbira at, at the Pan-African Parliament. Uh, is anyone uh, proud of what is happening with, with uh, Charumbira uh, at, at uh, the Pan-African Parliament? What are they trying to prove by putting back someone who is an embarrassment uh, to Zimbabwe? Charumbira is like the worst person. Uh, look what happened yesterday. They, they spent so much resources to put back uh, Fortune Charumbira as the Pan-African Parliament President. He has divided the whole, whole Pan-African Parliament. He's facing rape charges in Zimbabwe. And he's, he's facing fraud charges in, in, in South Africa, the Pan-African Parliament. 
instead of putting someone new, there are so many people in Zimbabwe that you can put there. They want and put the same person that they've been putting uh, and the person that is not delivering. What has Charumbira ever delivered? Even a speech. Have you ever seen Charumbira delivering a speech at pub? So he is going to cause more confusion and within a very short space of time, you're going to see something bad happening again and Zimbabwe will be another center of bad news. So that's another area where Zimbabwe is going to have bad news. So let's quickly go to Africa news. Uh, there's a potential for massive unrest in South Africa. Today there will be a judgment at 9 a.m. in which the ANC is trying to stop Jacob Zuma's party, the MK, MK party, from contesting. If that judgment goes against Zuma, something very bad is going to happen. And it was supposed to be delivered yesterday. It was not delivered. But we're on the verge of seeing something very, very bad, especially in KZN. And this unrest, if they've stopped the MK from contesting the elections, you're going to see something very, very bad happening all the way up to May. It's not going to be nice at all. Then we have um, another quick story, uh, another Africa story. Let's let's quickly look at Wikina. Wikina is trending all over the world because his wife, Sonja, has left. She has left, and at Gambako Media, we've given you the reasons why she left. This, this marriage has been in trouble since 2021. And I told you that myself and Wigno fell out because of that story, because we, we did reveal that before the death of Wigno's mother, Sonja was having certain fights uh, with the mother, accusing her of witchcraft, and also the sister of Sonja was out there bashing her. We've got the Instagram screenshots. You can go to gambako.com and look for, I think she's called Madeline. Uh, she, she's been tweeting there, explaining everything. So Wigno, although he's doing well in terms of financial uh, marriage, you know, Godzillis, many people who are prominent, they, they cannot uh, manage the marriages because you can't have it both. You know, you have one, one side, but you can't have a good marriage. And uh, except if you are someone that's very focused, otherwise most guys that I know, in public, at home, they're having a very hard time. Then I want to uh, quickly look if I've got anything else here. My system is down today. I'm not able, where I am, my internet is very slow. So I'm unable to look at the internet the, normal, the way I normally do. We have the, the South Africans, the Speaker of Parliament, she's going to court to stop uh, her arrest. She's involved in the fraud of four million when she was a minister of defense. She was collecting money from contractors. So she's facing arrest, but she's going to court to stop her arrest. And um, I think that, that that is the big stories that are there right now. There's nothing coming out of Zimbabwe. The, the big story is the failure by Mnangagwa uh, to complete his project. This is going to be a very, very big problem for ED. No one has confidence in ED. And ED does not know what to do. As we speak right now, ED has no plan for, for fixing the problem. He tried to put his family members. That's all that is left now. He's trying, trying to consolidate. But eventually someone has to step up and stop this. Uh, this thing that is happening in Zimbabwe is a big, big mess. There is no progress. There's no direction. Uh, and no one knows what is happening uh, and what is going to happen. Except for General Chwenga, who has taken over. You know, when General Chwenga took over the Mbriani Handa statue, it was quickly finished. ED can dig up the Harare streets. And you can see that after six months, they still dug up that street and there's no construction. It was actually better not to start because they don't know what is a timeline. They don't know what is a milestone. They don't know what resources to apply. That's basic project management. They don't know how to do it. And, and you end up having a military person to take over, uh, to run a project. That is the problem with ED. Look at what's happening in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. The, the monetary policy statement is not out. That is because they don't understand what to do. And they don't understand the pain that people are going through. Even people in government, they are now selling sweets in the offices and chips and maputi to survive. Um, if you see Mapachi, those guys who walk around with ED in the yellow t-shirts, that is because of Panamari, people are not making money. People are hungry. And Nangagwa is making everyone hungry. Uh, this is terrible. Uh, I want to quickly look at uh, the comments here, guys. I want to wrap this up. And, um, I may say, I'd finish projects 
can be lack of US dollar funding, no money, and the US dollar is paid. It's 20,000. They said there's no longer holding. Yes, Mukoma MS, do you know what he, let me explain to you what happened. When I went to Zimbabwe, that place, uh, I think that was about three years ago, it was starting to pick up. There was nothing that you were selling in your shop that was not being bought. So if you if you're selling drinks, chips, what about everything was being bought. And uh, the in school, everything was full. The airport, the plane was full. So Air Link, uh, all these uh, fly, flights going to Zimbabwe were full. And Air Zimbabwe was always full. The problem started when he de rigged uh, the election. And then after rigging, he refused to have a dialogue. Because ED could have simply rig the election and then went and had a dialogue with Chamisa. But then ED does not want to have a dialogue because he does not want to share power. Uh, he wants this small group of people around his family to, to be in office. That's where everything has fallen apart. The current is collapsing on a daily basis. And now we're starting to see shortages of goods. And the contractors are leaving the sites. So let's say they, they start at, uh, at the parliament there. They work, and then the time to be paid comes, and they don't pay. They will leave. And then they'll go and take another company, and the company starts and don't get paid, and they will leave. And that is a, a cascade. That is what's happening. And worse, they don't know how to collect money from people, US dollars. So Zomata or Zomata US dollars. You need to collect from other people. So you can't just collect from remittances. You also have to collect on a day-to-day -day basis, and they don't know how to collect. Mutuli Ngube, is no longer a minister of, uh, of finance. Uh, young David Kudamnangagwa is the one that is in charge there. And he doesn't know what to do. I, I've shown you that uh, David doesn't know what to do. You, you have people that are trying to, uh, to do things that they do not know. And that is where the mess is. Uh, and this thing is not going to be fixed. Um, let's go to Mkoma <laughs> Jonathan. You want to hit hard on ED. The ED administration is all useless. They start many projects with the same skills so that they can still still money and overestimate the cost yet the m is the economy is ailing all right let's take let's take the boots interchange boots interchange was overestimated by four times so it was supposed to cost 10 million i think that was open estimation that was supposed to cost 10 million and it cost 40. now they are stuck because first taguri is failing to supply uh, cement his company was given the contract to supply cement is failing to supply cement They've stolen all the money and they can't proceed. If you go to in, put the interchange now, the same way it was six months ago, that's the way it is. And Chuenga has to go there again <laughs> to, to make sure that those guys start working because all the contractors there were put over there by ED and they're not delivering. The worst thing that I, I, I felt was when I was driving on the Mashungo Road, Harare to Mashungo Road. And after about 40 kilometers, there was this stretch of road out of the blue that is not constructed. So everything else is done except for that stretch. And you can clearly see what this contract was given to a contractor that cannot deliver. And this is the problem. And these people, they should be made to pay back this money. Uh, same thing, Nana Wikino, they were given projects to Uganda. They didn't finish. Uh, Wikino has won 22 million against the Zesa right now, which Zesa has paid. That's why he's able to give all this money. But I don't think the money just goes to Wikino. I think it's being split uh, with all these guys who are in the uh, in the team. The Mkoma MSC says strategic ambiguity is working. If you are confused, Gambako imagine ZPF uh, is in the dark. No, no, Apa Mkoma, I don't agree with you. Uh, Chamisa needs a proper strategy. Uh, we, we all agree. But Chamisa is popular, but he needs to come out and give us a proper direction. That is my point and, and my view on this whole thing. We can't have an opposition that is just no way. And I've said to the guys, I talked to the guys over a, a long period of time. We cannot just have people in suspense. People love Chamisa, but they want direction. They need a direction. And then Mkoma last, you said Maputi. I went to the office in government. And this young lady, she is selling Maputi. So when I arrived, the first thing she says to me, do you need Maputi or... So she's, she's no longer concerned about the actual work that I'm there to do. In her brain, Munanoyam office market, Arkuda Maputi. So that is what they were talking about.
And uh, I'm sure everyone knows uh, those guys who walk around with an ED. Uh, some of them you can see what you want to run a pass. If you have guarding the president, you should be going home to a nice house. Uh, there should be a plan. You should be having uh, you said, I was going to all these countries with the president and now I've got a house to stay. All this thing that we're seeing right now, that is the final uh, end result of what is happening in Zimbabwe. The failure to finish projects, it shows you that there's no strategy. So uh, we can say NDS, what, what, or 2030 or whatever, those things are not working. They are failing at the implementation stage. Uh, ZANPF had some of the best strategies when they started. For example, the national housing strategy. I love that strategy. I, I showed you that strategy here, where they wanted to commercialize and formalize housing. But nothing has started. They don't start big, nice projects because it means they will have to involve people that are experts and professionals. For example, the ED likes to employ my relatives. So take, for example, at ZBC. That place was starting to pick up. Advertising was starting to pick up. The, the organization was starting to show direction. But he doesn't like to put professionals. So he ended up putting that young lady I was showing you yesterday as the chairperson of the board. You don't put someone as a chairperson of the board who's got no experience. Someone that has to read a book first to answer a question. You need someone who, if you ask them anything in that industry, they can give you an answer. And this is where everything has failed. Uh, it is people, they are not qualified for these jobs. The contractors that is put in place are not qualified for these jobs. And this is where everything is failing. Zimbabwe is doing very, very badly. <laughs> Rishai, I know him, Koma. <laughs> Rishai, I know him very well. Um, she, she's the daughter, isn't it, of uh, one of the guys, who top guys in Nangagwa's office. So you, you see, Kuti, I'm not making these criticisms very likely. And I did understand uh, what ED was trying to do in the beginning. I tried to, I, I, I almost begged for ED to do well. Uh, when I went to Zimbabwe, I wanted ED to do well. I went to that train station that they, they have there. Over 4,000 people every morning stepping out of that train. They want this, the people want to, to use these services. People want uh, to Zimbabwe to function, but ED is not making it happen. Uh, and, and it's a terrible mess. Um, then Matera, obviously, uh, I don't know. I don't know her. Um, I don't want to pick on individuals because the whole group is a mess. Uh, who do you think can compare the cabinet here, ED? Who in ED's cabinet can you compare to Mugabe's cabinet? These guys, they're amateurs. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. And that's why it's always with Siruk Famba. Because, firstly, they don't know how to collect money. Marie, you know, who are under government, and Mara Pana, there's no money. And Ugaona Munasga, who don't collect Mara, are in government. That person is a problem. Uh, I, I want to tell you the example of uh, what happened at Zimra. All those cars that they imported there, thousands and thousands of cars. My estimation is that they imported over a thousand cars. Go to Zimra now and say, how much tax did you collect from those cars that were imported? So let's say each car cost 20,000 and they imported 1,000 1, cars. And, and let's say it's 2 billion, right? Or whatever, I don't know, somewhere there, <laughs> or 200 million. How much tax did they collect in US dollars? You'll find that they did not collect. And I'm going to give you a specific example. Do not check my paper, as someone who didn't... Um, uh, pay tax. So my, my information is that Scott imported over 500 cars. So let's see what you can do Zimra. Are you going to see uh, 500 my, my tax and motor that I import on a Scott and the motor that I import on a uh, Wukino? Wukino are import over, uh, let's say, a thousand cars. Is there tax receipts for 1,000 cars? So when I'm aware of the anti-corruption commission, they must go and find Guti. Those cars that are being imported, are they paying import duty? And you'll find, you'll be shocking what you find there. And the Zimra guys, they know. Uh, the, the customs guys, they know this information. But, so, the problem at ED, 
First, they cannot collect information, uh, money. They cannot collect money. They don't know how to collect revenue collection. The, their revenue is so bad in US dollars. And then after that, they don't know how to run projects. And Zimbabwe is now a big construction site with no direction and with no end in sight of when they're going to finish. We are doing Motao Rinya Yakeya Kesti. Kesti is like the West Minister. I will leave that to my RSC. He's been slamming Kesti on a daily basis. I like, if you go to my RSC's Facebook, all she does is slam Kesti. And the Kesti, Kesti Kevin. Uh, she is a, a big problem. Uh, and we expected her to do well as someone who's been all over the world. So I want to wrap this up. As I said, my system is down in terms of speed. I'm not able to uh, access my newspapers and stuff. So what, what I will do now is I want to wrap this up and we want to, I want to thank everyone who's been supporting. So the, the funding that we're getting is all from our people here who watch the audience. So I know that everyone who's uh, contributing their hundred dollars and fifty dollars and whatever, that is how I'm making a living now and running the, the media. But we obviously need more than that. We need to raise 200,000 for the government office. Uh, in, in Zimbabwe, in Harare, uh, that is where we need to set up our head office. So I'd like to thank everyone, uh, and I have tried to reply to everyone who sent money yesterday, but unfortunately, I don't have time to, to reach everyone, but I'm aware of all the contributions that everyone is making. But obviously, the longer term uh, thing that we want to do is to raise that 200000 to run the head office in Harare so that I can be physically every day uh, at Harare and do what I'm doing now from over there. So that is it. Uh, I, I was looking at Joseph Kalimwe. He's very unhappy with what happened at uh, Pan-African Parliament. But eventually, he's going to get vindicated. Uh, Charumbira is the worst person to put as a, a pub president. He's not capable of anything. And he wants to just take the ZANU-PF uh, ideology to, to pub. And this thing is not working. What we need is a new approach in Zimbabwe. We need young people to take over and, and to do very, very well. Uh, we need a different approach. So Zimbabwe needs a reset and things will work. At the moment, things are not working. I'm actually happy that uh, General Chwenga goes out there and gives these guys hit. And I hope that we'll see Mount Hamden fixed. He said he gave them up to June. And I know what the Van Weyek Soldiers and Company, they are capable of delivering. The problem is, I, I don't know why they just don't pay them. Uh, these guys are not being paid. That's what I think. Uh, the projects are not being paid. So they can't deliver if they, there's no payment. So, Mkoma Gwatirisa, you're saying I must ask Wikino for 200,000. So this is a very difficult for, for me, right? Because remember, I run a, a company, right? So I normally go to banks and say, banks, give me money so that I can set up and run a media house. But media is not profitable to the extent you would Right now, sometimes our guys don't get paid. It's that bad. Uh, so I had 30 people at Gambako at the, at the peak. And at that time, our revenue was about $20,000 a month. Right now, because of the proliferation of media, I think our, our, our revenue is dropped by 90%. So we make less than a thousand for media activities, all the way down from twenty thousand a month. So you can see how bad it is. So if I was to go to Wigno and say, uh, Wigno, people two hundred thousand, it's probably one bends to him, and to me it will mean a, mean a lot. But Wigno is going to turn around and say, Gambakwe, Tangawati, Idi, Wuch. Do you see? This is the problem that is there. So what I've tried to do is to go to other people who are not weak now so that I don't become compromised. So I try to go to uh, people that are probably institutions and I try to go to uh, international organizations to ask for money. But it's not easy. We also don't have the capacity to apply for, for these grants. And sometimes we don't meet uh, the requirements. So I think in Zimbabwe funded media there are a lot of funded media in Zimbabwe, but they're not us. It's other people that are funded, and they don't put the effort that we put in. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where we are able to get funding. 
and when you get funding, you will see the drastic improvement that is going to happen. Because media is very serious. It's life-changing. And I want to educate our guys. Mungawana mini media like a simba in your country. You are going to do well. In in, I'm coming from NAST. The first funding I got was from the NAST SRC. That is how I was able to fund the newspapers. And the money that the NAST SRC put into funding me is working up to 2024. And I was NAST at 1998. Imagine the impact that we have if all our media was working in 20 years time, what impact we're going to have. So we must take this very seriously. And if we have a proper media, and I'm not they're going to stop what they're doing. And as court, they're going to stop killing people. And Jesus is a total rapper now. I don't mean it. He may not tell you that. Because they know they're failing to run this and they're making people hungry. Sam Nangaba is the worst person. He's making everyone hungry. I've been saying this over a year. No one is making money under Nangaba. And there is no one who's going to say it if you don't have a proper media. And I know most of you are tired of, of these things. You, you want to put Zimbabwe functioning because there's nothing that is going to stop Zimbabwe from functioning. Uh, this country has got everything to function. It's just poor leadership. So we need to address poor leadership and we can only do it if we, uh, we have a proper media. Uh, Isusuko Gambabwe produced over 20 guys on social media that are currently publishing. Who are not working with me. Who are now independent. But if you look at uh, the potential nast is producing 40 graduates in media a month msu the same uh, university of zimbabwe the same and now we've got manikal university great zimbabwe university all these guys are sitting at home selling airtime and we need our country to do very very well uh, we're gonna do well but it's gonna be very hard uh, we, we have to first of all have a, a, a structure around chamisa so i want everyone to understand we all need to rally around chamisa is the person that is going to take us politically to where we're going. But we also need to build other structures around. So when the economics, it economics, when we media, do media, uh, people who are in NGOs, do NGOs. And don't let us operate by ourselves. So I went to this young lady in, in Harare. She's sitting on a very big budget from one of the international organizations. I say, help us to, to run our media. And she is capable of making that signature to make it happen. But she's going to sit there and just sit on that money and eventually to be taken back as money that was not used. So we, we don't want people who are in a position to help, who can help, uh, just because you want to feel important and special. We don't want that. We want people who help. Um, and, and Dr. Arusha, thank you very much. Mm, and it's not only Gambakwe. I want our young guys uh, to, to come out and be effective. The difference between me and everyone is that I know these guys. I've been to Zanpio head office. I've been to every single opposition person's house, uh, maybe probably besides Chamisa. I know these guys because we started off uh, with uh, the SRCs. But let's build something that is functional. Let's build a country that is operational. And at the moment, Andam Nangaba, this is not happening. And we need to smash Mnangaba daily until he fixes. Because Mnangaba is going to fix right now. As we speak, while we are waiting for all these changes to happen, Mnangaba must fix the currency. Mnangaba must finish the projects. Mnangaba must stop and we are not held to account. No one must be afraid of seeing these things and making sure that uh, these things work. And I know that everyone is capable of standing up and, and making sure that things work. Then we have a proper country. So I want to end it here. Today, I'm going to be back in uh, office, uh, let's say, in a week. So I, I will be back full time. That is next week. That is when I will be around. But at the moment, I'm really doing a lot of things outside. I'm trying to organize because I made a big move last year and I've started my PhD. So it's going to be quite hectic. I, I'm, I'm actually deciding now, should I continue with this thing or not? It's just too much work for me. So thank you very much, everybody, and a good day to you all.